Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oz Fortress Season 24, Week 6. This is uh, Pineapple Towers versus Coffee Clock. Uh, with me on my co-caster role tonight is the wonderful Sean, and on camera is Wide Hoofed. How are you doing, Sean? I'm doing fantastic. Just got home from work and keen to get stuck into some Premier Team Fortress 2. Yeah, I'm very excited to see some uh, some very, very good gamers play tonight. We have Coffee Clock on the blue team on your screens tonight. They are, uh, I believe, currently tied in first place with Big Chungus, which is the Hertz and Rocky team. Uh, but they are, I believe, only behind them in terms of their Buchholz score. Buchholz? Or Buchholz? I don't know how you say it, man. Um, uh, they leave have that the- to the Germans. <laughs> but they are, yeah, they're only... Uh, they're tied with them in terms of their actual round wins. I think their Buchholz scores or Buchholz or whatever it is, is just slightly different. Don't make fun of me, man. Sorry, dude. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so this is essentially the first or second place team, depending on how you look at it, uh, versus I believe they are currently playing third. Is that correct, Sean? I can't be certain, but I'd say that this would be the third seeded team and the expected third place team um, in Pineapple Towers. There's some interesting chat in uh, in the other in the team. Sorry, they're just sort of seeing if they can like figure out some sort of mercs or something. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but in the meantime, let's just go down the rosters of who is in the server right now. Do you want to take us down the roster of one of these teams, Sean? Sure, I'll hit you with the the Pineapple Towers roster. Um, the roster I'm interested in seeing seeing how well they play together. So they have the very ex- experienced uh, Malaysian sensation TJ on Pocket Scout. Um, they've got Miko Lash on the flank scout, another sort of semi-tenured prem gamer, middle, you know, low to mid prem, long time gamer. Um, the very experienced soldier duo in Paws and Tay, uh, obviously former teammates of mine. They have Ivan, aka Oven, aka Frozone, aka Mister Freeze for this cast um, <laughs> on Demo Man, um, and the the very experienced live long medic Arnold. Yeah, there's some uh, good talent on this team. There's some, as you say, long-standing players in Michael Ash, uh, Arnold, and uh, Paws as well. Been playing for a very long time, and some Prem winners indeed in Tay and Paws. So there's some uh, and TJ actually uh, and Arnold. There's a lot of Prem winners on this team. I'm not, so I'm they- not sure that. Tay and Paws have won. I think Paws oh, has come Paws second has- a bunch oh, of times. Oh, maybe yeah. So two second place, I should say. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's two second place, a couple of first place. There's some good talent on this team, so they do stand a pretty damn good chance of uh, fighting off uh, the juggernaut that is Coffee Clock. So let's just go down the Coffee Clock roster as well. Uh, on Medic is Doge, returning to this class after a couple of seasons of playing Demo Man very, very competently. Uh, Lammers is Cookie, playing Scout. Yol is Yule, playing Pocket Soldier. Redcoat Zygote is their Demo Man. Sam is the other Scout. Scout and Riot is their roaming soldier. And that being said, we do have a ready up. So they are heading into this very first mid. The first map of this week is Granary. So why don't you take us away on this very first mid, Sean? Yeah, so I'm just, I'm just having a look at um, Redcoat. Whoa, okay, oh Redcoat manages to get uh, Mr. Freeze himself with the really early sticky. That's the, the Paulson patented sticky there, and it looks like. Um, yeah, it looks like Pineapple Towers have decided to not contest that one. <laughs> I yeah. think we'll be seeing a, uh, a top rollout next time. Um, Coffee Locker already pushing this far left yard, not wanting to give up or oh, give anything to Pineapple Towers. TJ dropping the we've practiced for this in chat after <laughs> Ivan gets absolutely annihilated at mid. Um, they are all actually managing to survive on this second point, and these Ubers have evened up. But as you said, that right yard, or sorry, left yard from the attacker's perspective, uh, was taken by the blue team. And there's some really aggressive sticky traps going up on the side of, Re- of Redcoat as he's sort of trapping off that Z area. And they are sort of settling into this stalemate just a little bit. No off-class shenanigans or anything like that because no one really died apart from Ivan and that has just uh, <laughs> turned into this second stalemate really, really quickly. They're peeking it kind of uh, aggressively, actually. Some nice stickies going down on the ground from Redcoat, but Matt is oh, really far forward and he tray, yeah. absolutely cleans him up there. And they're 
completely reverse that situation. Looking to push out through on this flank. Pause gets some nice rockets. Matt gets some nice rockets. Ride is taken down very, very low. TJ loses his life on the other side too, but they're falling right, right back. And that's only TJ going out. Ivan, uh, sorry, not Ivan, Arnold taking a little bit of damage there, but he was never really in any danger. And they are forced back all the way to mid. And this is still a second stalemate, mid to second stalemate, except they have broken through into Yard. Some very, very safe controlled play coming out tonight in which is a uh, week six game. So it's going to set some seedings, I believe. If this team uh, takes a few rounds off Coffee Clock, if Pineapple Towers take some rounds off Coffee Clock, they stand to be uh, to be seated well above the fourth place team uh, in, uh, I believe it's Unanimous Confusion who are currently coming forth. So this round, uh, these rounds could mean quite a lot to this team. But yes, nothing really happening. The Soldier is coming in in Riot there. Doesn't even manage to get a decent rocket on Arnold as he does get absolutely mulched. Countersack is coming in from Tay. Tay just gets absolutely mulched again. The tale of, of Roma's <laughs> <it's> happening <laughs> again and again and again. They're sort of beating their head against this wall. Neither Medic in any real danger here. We'll see if Riot comes up something uh, a bit spicy in Sniper or something like that. Does Fish, actually offer to come in. Sacking. Ooh. It gets taken down. Oh, huge rockets from Pause. He actually ends up taking down. Doge is on 10 health and he doesn't pop. He doesn't pop to that. That's really nice play from Doge to, to hold that. And his team is, is forming up again all the way around him. And they do have like the player disad, but they're not giving up any ground here. And yeah, there was just... some really good rockets from the soldiers of Coffee Clock then, just trying to stop that player ad push um, into mid. But um, yeah, looks like we're just going to have a reset, all players up, no off classes. See what the soldiers of Coffee Clock can do. It was a really good bomb from Yule um, last time, made a lot of space, but yeah, not a lot happening at the moment. Classic Granary. Yeah, and this is the RC8, I believe. Sam goes in trying to get something something happening. Nothing really going for that. Pause is going in for the counter sack. He's right on to Doge, but Doge is surfing that really, really quickly. No, yeah, he's not! Drops. Oh, pause. Yeah, Doge holding that for... Well, I don't know. He did. Pause shouldn't have lived for that long, but we'll see what the counter... Um, if any counter aggression comes in, as we do see Yule trying to go for the long bomb onto... Onto Pineapple Towers. Is all but, their oh, players going yeah. down. It's just the Ivan who's taking quite a lot of damage, trying to bide time for his medic to get away. Pause is the only spawner for him. He's going to have to be forced by himself here. The second point is falling at the very least. Yeah, that Uber does get used as he yeah, eats that rocket in there. And this is now, yeah, about 30 add on the side of Doge after dropping that Uber before. They're not really getting anything. He's trying to get Sam as he's trying to leak behind a little bit there. He does actually manage to trade there. Some nice rockets from Yule uh, coming in there to clean up Paws, who was taken down low by that fight. But this is now a, an ad push from the side of Blue Team coming into last tier. Paws is still down. And they're off class. Michael Ash coming up on heavy, but that's the only thing that they're doing to try try to uh, slow down this uh, full Uber ad coming in. Yeah, it was, uh, I was going to say, like, the combo of Pineapple Towers, so mostly Ivan and Arnold then, like, they had the ad and they just baited way too long with the Uber. As we do see the Uber being used in right off the goal into last. Take down Arnold uh, really early. Michael Ash goes down on the heavy, and now we're going to see just the player I push into last by Coffee Clock. The health is really low on everyone, actually. We're going to see where this falls out as Sam takes down Ivan, and that's going to be a round, I think, to Coffee Clock. Yeah, that was some really close, like nearly round saving play from Tay. They're actually hitting quite a few good rockets, getting down uh, the med and demo, I believe it was, at the very end there. But it just was too little, too late. And all these players, Sam, on very low health there, but does manage to run at that demo and clean him up. And this is uh, one round on the board for Coffee Clock. And we head into now our second mid here. Redcoat opting to go lower this time, hitting that sticky upper as he thinks that uh, Ivan would go upper there. Some good damage onto TJ, and that's forcing them to play super passive. And Riot is taking advantage of all of that space that he's been given takes that arrow from his medic and is ready to go back in but the height is all on the side of red team here pause going in actually does get mulched a little bit there but matt is there on the follow-up bomb doesn't manage to get anything done as cookie is the monster he is defeating everyone who comes anywhere near his medic there both scouts still alive as they are charioting their medic out on the side of red team oh but michael ash does get caught out as he wasn't uh being beamed there as he was just opting to beam tj in order to get the maximum run speed but they are all on last point and this is TJ dying pause coming out to see what he can get done here they do fall back here making Arnold survive does get his uber up in time but this was some really really aggressive play from coffee clock Sean 
Yeah, and it all started with Riot on mid actually just being so much faster than every other player bar the demos. He was on the enemy um, enemy bats uh, to lock out the players from entering mid, and from there, Coffee Clock were just able to roll all over them from that point. This Uber is actually committed onto second already. That's an early pop from red to uh, blue team, rather, but they do manage to pick the pocket uh, of Tay going down there, and this Uber is just fading with just some stickies being spammed there, just from Ivan. He's not really able to do much. TJ going forward and eating a rocket for his trouble, but Riot's timing is really good. Doesn't get anything done for it, unfortunately. Um, and the pause is coming in to see what he can get done, but Yule is, is again hitting some really, really nice rockets, keeping them in, and they've wrapped them onto this other side, far left from the attacker's perspective, and the point's being played, and they're in no position to sort of do anything about it. TJ jumping forward, doing what he can, but Cookie is so much higher health than him, and he can't get anywhere. Nice, actually, pipe from Ivan there, taking out that, and that's Redcoat going down there as well. This is going to be a hold. Doge on 95 after oh. getting that saw. No, can't quite manage to get anyone else near him. I reckon he does. Paulson went with the Doge call. Uh, sorry, Doge went with the Paulson call to push off Uber then into last, and unfortunately, I reckon just like a few more rockets from either of those soldiers, and that would have been a coffee clock round, but not to be. Yeah, that was very, very close, and I agree with what you said. It was definitely a, a very aggressive uh, Paulson-esque off, off Uber call there. And we do see this full ad from Red Team now marching its way into this midpoint through this death corner, but Riot Riot. Riot. Huge bomb. Yeah, yeah, he was probably goblining somewhere stupid because it's Riot. These stickies still haven't been cleared from up. Oh, and they do take... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. I had a sip of my beverage just before and it's fizzy. Uh, and, oh. But they do, they do take out Yule up the top there as well. Some nice damage from uh, Ivan closing out Doge in, and uh, the demo man in that corner. And it's just Sam uh, staying alive there. Uh, to back his medic out and they're regrouping on second but they didn't even use that some really nice holding from Arnold uh, on that midpoint as they have set it up into what's going to be I assume an even Uber's second hold here as they are not really going to be fast enough to make any move in that and actually being this being said Sam does seem to be behind he's taking a duel with Michael Ash AFK? looks like he's going to lose Doge AFK? oh what? my god is this the grand final all over again? Is he falling asleep at his keyboard? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's asleep, dude. Um, so, that's unfortunate. Nothing in chat about that yet, but... <laughs> no, I'm not quite sure what's happened there. Last, I remember the last game we casted with him too, he accidentally dropped Uber to a kill bind. He kill bound and, and dropped, which was very interesting. But that is going to look like it's going to convert to a round on the board here as this Uber is coming up. Matt is actually taken down super low by some nice damage from Sam. He's still alive though, and the arrows aren't coming in for him. He's going to trade with Yule, it looks like, at the very top. No, he's still alive! Times four on the point, and that is the round going the way. Just off that... Uh, I'm not even sure. I wasn't watching I Doge. Yeah, I don't know. I, he was just, he was standing there, not look, he obviously was not using his computer at the time, but either way, a round is a round. Yeah, price. and that does indeed tie it up, and this is looking to be a, a very exciting game, is this one round apiece. Uh, death coat, uh, de death red coat. coat, red coat going death corner again here, <laughs> trading some stickies with Ivan. Ivan taking some damage from Riot there as he is forced backwards, then arrows from his medic to keep him alive there. But all the high ground is kind of just being played fairly passively right now, nothing committing, and then it's just Riot trying to commit there. TJ turning around after a nice fight from Ivan to crush that uh, jumping player. Sam Sam comes going in from behind in. here, actually. He's like distracting all of the players, um, making space for Yule and the rest of Coffee Clock to come in. But I don't know, this looks like a. This could be a pretty convincing mid for Pineapple Towers by the end. But Yule is not wanting to give this up at all. He ends up dying for that. Yeah, um, I think he, he ate that arrow from his medic and just wanted to, to give his medic the time to leave because he only had uh, one gamer with him at the time. So they are actually moving this forward really, really aggressively into this second point. Uh, Ivan hitting some nice, uh, nice stickies there to sort of sh shield them back. But that being said, TJ just walks on like five stickies there and dies. Not quite sure what he expected to accomplish there or whether that was a, a ping moment. But indeed, they are trying to move off this one player out actually. And Matt is in a really good spot. Actually manages to just to get away with his life there. Not actually managing to hit anything, unfortunately. Uh, but Ivan is taking this uh, fight with the scout. They're, they're going to go for this trade here as Doge is the most forward player on his team. Does manage to use on this scout. And it's Michael Ash who's forcing the flash out of Arnold there to survive. And they're just going to have to walk all the way backwards on that 
uh, slightly weaker Uber exchange there, and they have now lost one player in the pocket going down. Pause is still in the um, garage area, seeing if he can leak behind a little bit. But Death Corner is being played really hard, and that is Ivan losing his life. Ugh. Some excellent meat coming out of Cookie there. He does lose his life. Pause going in, seeing if he could do uh, any sort of uh, messy fight as well in the end there. But that is uh, an even Uber's situation still, but they have lost so many players that the mid has fallen on the side of Coffee Clock, uh, Sean. But actually, Pineapple Towers are coming back in. They want to fight this. They don't want to give it up without a fight, but uh, Sam actually ends up capping it out. And he's now behind them, and I think this is going to become an issue if they can't kill him pretty soon. He does go down. Um, Yeah, like a consistent thing I'm seeing is that Coffee Clock are uh, just out chatting Pineapple Towers in all of these dry pushes and single player ad pushes and just like whether it's just complete chat or disrespect I'm not sure but it's, it's really working for them they're always getting a free point or a free pick or um, you know like just anything off oh nothing. Tay trying to stretch his luck there seeing if he could get past but Redcoat's trigger finger is too spicy there but the flank is actually being pushed Michael Ash and Pause are both pushing really really far behind and this Uber has been forced and they've lost three players before even using that is three players down on each side Red Team could wrap them through here but they're going to be too slow and the flank is just now uh, spawning on the other oh, sorry four seconds away from spawning I think they're not going to manage to make anything happen and this is just a three player down reset it looks like as they're spamming just a little bit trying to see what they can get done but it's just uh, no ground exchange between both teams uh, as yeah Matt oh, goes no. down again but TJ actually takes down the medic I didn't see what happened there did you? Yeah, I was looking at the, the map bomb from the side, and I think that was what the other team was doing too, because he managed to get in right uh, really, really quickly without being seen there. And that being said, the counter sack has come in, and they have absolutely collapsed on Arnold. So many players sacking for his life, and they do manage to get it in the end, but they're still managing to hold um to hold mid here. It's just Michael Ash and now the spawner of Matt coming in, uh, and they're not choosing not to push at all uh, yeah, in Michael that with Ash their player with the disad. The flex, two shot onto Cookie, and then, yeah, Riot feared. Yeah, they are all up now on both teams, though. It's pretty even Ubers. The red team does seem to be wanting to see if they can poke into Yard a little bit, but Sam and uh, Yule are not really having any of that, although Sam and Yule both get Whoa. taken down really quickly. As I say that, TJ taken down quite low as he's trying to walk through all these stickies, but they are forced to back out uh, off that really coordinated flex on the side of Pineapple Towers. This, this, uh, this game's still got a lot of steam in it, Sean. I'm getting excited. Yeah, me too. It's like... um. Pineapple Towers are a lot, a lot uh, better match for the Coffee Clock than I was expecting, and it's exciting. We do have Sam actually coming up on Sniper uh, as they are trying to hold this second point. He's just seeing what he can do. They do seem to be wanting to push this far side there. TJ taking a lot of damage uh, as these players are jumping forward trying to do what they can there. Uh, Sam, oh, really I don't bad think, has been spotted. On the side of uh, Pineapple Towers, yeah. That being said, they are converting this, and this is a lot of frags going their way. Ivan is actually on one health, does take the uh, the pop out there, and they clean up Matt uh, Tay behind there. They do manage to get this uh, the force out of Doge and a fair few frags for them on that Uber, and they're still five, uh, sorry, five seconds away from their spawns there. They uh, might move in, and there's that is indeed that is pause going for the frag onto Doge while uh, their player's down, and they can't protect him as well. But Doge is far too wiggly, and he manages to survive that one soldier bomb. Um, there's Riot going in for the counter sack a little bit there, and there's nothing nothing going unfortunately on both of these two teams. Doge was taken down pretty low there, but uh, nothing really nothing really going unfortunately. And um, this is. Still, Sam actually no switched off sniper there. I think he got fragged in in that all exchange, uh, and they're just resetting for what I don't know. I don't know if they realise how even how uneven this has got. Yeah, they do look like they do as Sam has uh, come up on that sniper and the gun is going up by riot there. They do think they have a little bit more time than they than they think though, and that's Cookie oh. actually getting fragged on the side. And Michael Ash is taken down by a body shot on Sam. Really quick answer. This gun is still up, and Matt loses his life there. Arnold. Not sure what he was doing. He seemed to bait his team a little bit there. They uh, might have just assumed that it was going to go even and they decided to do a two-player sack. Um, but they still had a little bit of time there. So if they were a, little bit, a bit quicker, they could have moved on that a little bit. But Coffee Clock were, were ready for that and they just shut down that two-player sack really, really easily, Sean. Yeah, I mean, that's just real, like, um, what's a regimented play from Coffee Clock just trying to play the percentages now that they look they know it's like 1-1 with 15 minutes left they're not in 
the winning position yet, so they've actually got to play properly, I guess. Yeah, Sam looks like he's uh, wandering back to maybe change off. No, he's just changing angles here. They do still have the gun up. They're just opting to turtle this uh, last without sort of sending any sacks or, any or doing anything. As you say, they are playing the percentages right here. They don't want to go one round down, and that is Sam hitting a great shot onto Matt as he sort of pokes his head out just for a second, loses his life. Those stickies do oh, take out that, and Pause takes nice out by Cookie. Pause. Yeah, Pause is ready for that. It's yeah. Nice. They are still on their back their back player. They do still have the seventh gamer up in that uh, sentry gun. Uh, this scout is actually trying to... TJ there is trying to attempt these stickies, but uh, he has been dead on the other side. And they're all down, and Pause spots the Pause opportunity. Pause actually in now. Nice rockets. Uh, he actually does manage to take out a scout instead. Riot is actually oh, running a shotgun on this engineer. By managed... Pause. I mean, sorry, by Tay then. Yeah, they do sack three players for this force, but this is a, a pretty favourable situation for them to be in as they can uh, sort of cheese this a little bit. And they are indeed choosing to cheese that. This Uber is actually oh. forced, and they drop their demo man. Oh, oh and it's no. just TJ, and they're forced to play fight this scout behind, Sam and there's the juggling Hitch. coming in from. Uh, uh, sorry, who's this demo man? Redcoat. Yeah. And that's Arnold losing his life. Some excellent juggles on that Ubered player there. And this situation has turned around completely just off the back of that really awkward looking Uber. But that being said, there are two players behind them. Matt and uh, uh, Michael Ash both trying to go for some sort of back cap play there. But they both get taken out really, really quickly. And it's now three down. And this has sort of reversed itself super, super quickly. Mid to second stalemate on the side of uh, Coffee Clock again. And there... Uh, full ad ready to make another move onto uh, Pineapple Towers. Second, Sean. <laughs> yeah. um, Sam actually just went huge then. Well, like, it was a battle of who was going to click first between Arnold and Sam, and Sam won that one as we get uh, Coffee Clock moving into Yard now. But Pause has actually got the jump on Doge. He's not sleeping this time with a Doge nice is, Yeah, that was really nice to see. He, he wiggled really well there. But this uh, percentage is getting closer and closer and closer. They should see if they can get this uh, second for free, and that is indeed what they're doing. This second is for free. Doge is not taking any damage from these rockets raining down on him. Uh, this is uh, even Ubers now. These Ubers have evened out, uh, and they're just sort of trying to find a little opening there. Riot poking his head through in that upper, but Pause is not letting him get through at all. There's no um, no off classes at the moment on the other side. <laughs> there, Sam and Riot going in for this double sack. Riot losing pretty Ivan, hard there. Yeah, I've uh, Ivan flexed on him pretty bad. Managed yeah. to get the demo though as well. That's not what you want to happen as TJ just walks forward. And this is, yeah, that's not what they wanted to happen at all. I'm not sure if Redcoat was just doing a little bit of disrespect. Yule actually trading with TJ as well. And that's another player down. So they're two down here. And this is, uh, yeah, they're all flooding through this garage side. And it's just the Roma as he takes quite a lot of damage and he's forced to back right out. And the players are only just now rotating to meet the entire team uh, of. Uh, pineapple towers. Sam is quite low. Eats that arrow from his medic to take a, to take it back. But that was some really nice holding. Some really nice uh, catching of those players who were maybe just a little bit too aggressive. Sean. Yeah, it seems like really good um, focus calls on the side of pineapple towers. Like very concise calling. Everyone was shooting at the same thing every time. Like the on well, mostly on Sam when Sam came in. Then so. Yeah, solid. So we're gonna see like an even Uber situation. We'll have right, a change jumps his in, mind. jumps out. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> uh, so pause. pause. Let's go if something gets taken down by those soldiers. Right, he's coming in now onto Arnold. Nice serve by Arnold. He gets taken down. Um, Sam trying to leak in to far left yard, and he's actually made it. He's behind them right now. Um, yeah, and they just lost their pocket, so this is not the best situation to be in. I'm not sure if they quite realize that Sam is there. TJ is looking. He knows it's a possibility. Michael Ash seems to not have any ideas. He's just kind of peeking underneath him without seeing there. Cookie is taking a lot of ground there, and they're, they oh, are managing no. to walk forward. But this is Sam right in on not really dealing any damage to Arnold there. He's kind of, yeah, beefing out a little bit, unfortunately. But he does uh, lose his life, and this is holdable now for Red Team here, as they are the Star Scout Sam down. Yeah, we do have both soldiers coming in now. Yule's actually trying to get in through Z. Um, no, they've decided to yeet that idea. Um, yeah, we've just got a classic hold holding pattern here. Coffee Glock trying to break into second. Even Ubers, no off glasses. Yeah, see what happens. Sam's opting to spawn up as scout as well, so he's not taking that uh, that opportunity to, to play sniper, which he's so well known for. And they are just sort of trying to take this a little bit passively. Actually, no, they do want to solo in here onto Yule. But Cookie is, is 
yeah, getting flashed there. I'm not quite sure what that was, because in that situation, it would make much more sense to solo on your pocket, and they actually do drop their pocket in the end of that. I don't know if that was just a little bit of miscommunication on the side of Cookie going in there and uh, taking a little bit of that Uber. TJ loses his life on the flank, uh, but he's the only player down, and it's uh, Doge and Riot. Uh, both very, uh, sorry, Riot is very low. Doge is just trying to hit some arrows on him to keep him alive. Cookie is in there, but they're flexing on them right now as these stickies from... Riot is on the Medic. Oh, huge rockets from Riot. That was so nice. He does get taken down by Ivan, but yeah, Riot with just the perfectly timed jump in. Aporia level. Um, I was going to say, that that trade, Cookie would have called that scout trade, and I actually think it would have been Redcoat coming in on his trade. That's like, if you remember Cookie with Jasmine, um... That, that was their play, especially in that kind of situation, to take that scout trade. Um, yeah, but use, using, on, using on Yule around the corner was a bit interesting if they were going for a scout trade, though. Like, it felt yeah. like it was a pocket trade, and then Cookie was just in. It, I, I don't know. It was, a, it was a little weird. It did seem to work out for them, though, because Wright has, like, he can smell that opening on the flank and just went right into Arnold's face. He's got his uh, his Roma sensors going, as they do have the gun up coming up on last now uh, from TJ as he's off-class there. No other off-classes to be spoken for as this 100% Uber is getting closer and closer. Indeed, it does get used through the upper area here, and the gun is just going down now uh, as Redcoat hits those stickies on it. Matt is taken down quite low, manages to crater on the point there. Pause is taken down quite low, some nice Nice rockets from Yule cleaning him up and it's TJ jumping around trying to focus these players but he's down too low and it's just Arnold left and that's not enough and that is two to one on the side of Coffee Clock, Sean. Yep, and I guess MVP for that round, Riot, just to, with the winning rockets I guess on that transition play. Um, so we'll see how this mid goes. Last mid was quite interesting watching Ivan, like he walked out lower then walked back in garage and then back top and then kind of only then started to play the mid he does go top this mid takes some early damage and oh dies. he does lose yeah. his life yeah he i think walked to where that pack should have like he thought it should have been and then just like missed it it was a little unfortunate we do see tay trying to go in to make something happen there uh absolutely nothing going there for him and it's arnold michael ash and tj both opting to run all the way back to that last as they're just leaving that scout to cap again breaking far left uh, to get there as quickly as they possibly can and there's the Michael Ash has spotted them early there called that and they're just opting to fall back into last although Ivan is very far forward he could be a free pick there does take quite a lot of damage manages to eat that arrow and they he's but he doesn't know the combos moved behind them the co yeah they have used behind them right now but oh no Arnold does get his Uber in time they've used everyone's in a really weird position kind of like coffee clock just used above above Pineapple Towers and didn't get much with it. Um, yeah. Yeah, they do manage to get the pocket trade there at the very end as he jumps forward to try to make sure that they're all locked out there. But this soldier focus is really nice on TJ as he does lose his life there as both soldiers were shooting right at him. Now that both soldiers have turned around and they've looked at that demo man and they've both turned around and they've looked at that soldier. <laughs> that was some really nice soldier play. They were just like bam, 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 one after another. Really nice soldier play walking into the, into that last on that uh, two-player ad that they definitely made the most out of, leaving that to 3-1 on the board with about five minutes left what do you reckon needs to happen on this mid sean to turn it around um yeah i think we just need all that aggression from pineapple towers and if they hit their shots you know they're every chance to just sort of roll it with the same level of aggression that coffee are doing so do you see pause going for the really high bomb everyone's looking at him um tay is the oh, only Matt. one to oh, far out i was gonna say he's Some the only one to follow up and he gets rewarded for it but the rest of his team are just sitting on the other side of the map while their soldiers are in the opposite death corner um and it looks like this they're gonna... is very interesting. Yeah, all these players cratering on this mid as Yule is just kind of spamming rockets there while standing still. Yeah, that was a really nice turnaround. Those bombs from Pause and, and Tay, both uh, jumping in really, really aggressively. And that was a nice rocket from Tay cleaning up on that yeah. excellent surf from Doge. He stood no chance after hitting that surf. You think you're safe, then the other soldier is right in your face and you eat that rocket and you do lose your life. I suppose some consolation there is that Arnold did lose his life in that mid too. So they do end up with a little bit of add off the back of this, but this is still uh, Red's, Red Team's push. This is their aggression. They have four minutes left. So I believe it is still theoretically possible to tie this up and push it towards a golden cap, but they have to go fast Sean they do have to go fast so like in this situation that what like is there any point losing like 3-1 
or would you rather lose like 5-1? They should have just dry pushed, tried to move into left yard or something like well before this. Because uh, like the reverse is happening. Um, Coffee Clock have dot pushed, they've taken down Ivan. Um, re oh, red coat absolutely pounds on Arnold and TJ in death corner. Doge picks up Arnold's med gun, has 50% add. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty rough. Absolutely I was gonna say, amazing this, play, yeah. This all kind of comes down to on that mid, Matt, uh, Matt and Paws had the right idea going really aggressive, hitting some nice rockets. And then the other four players of Pineapple Towers were sitting in their own death corner and did not walk across the point as their soldiers did. And now we're just in this sort of, yeah, just the lack of aggression from Pineapple Towers is costing them, I think. Yeah, Paws doing his best to try to even things out there as he does walk in. Nothing really going for him, unfortunately. Uh, Tay, the pocket, is actually up on Sniper right now in this... Uh, is he in the forward spawn? No, he's, he's uh, chosen, chosen, chosen to jump back there as this Uber has been committed onto the last point. Does look like they're going to take Redcoat out here. Doge is still alive. He's so low. That was a really, really nice surf. Yule coming in there with some nice rockets to clean up these players jumping forward and Riot is doing a lot of work keeping TJ away from the players he needs to be fighting and that is now 4-1 with two minutes left as this uh, game is starting to slip out of uh, slip out of their hands Sean yeah I mean it's looking unlikely at this point but at this point of the game you can always take momentum into the next map so you'd still be looking to try and win a mid get some uber ad um, yeah, just play some frags, but we do. And have, this yeah, is a actually a little bit of BM, team. yeah. Oh sticky jumps God. in there, absolutely farms oh. three people. Holy what? shit! Ban this man. That's going in the fra in the folder. Going in the folder. <laughs> He's dropped the deft bind in chat. What a champion! And that is just Arnold running for his life now. Uh, actually, what is he doing? He's hiding around this corner, seeing if he can ham someone. <laughs> no one's taking the bait. Yule's going for a little bit there. They realise this game is is uh, gone, and now we have about two minutes of memes to commentate, Sean. Yeah, my f my favourite part of any cast. It's what I've missed. Um, but yeah, I guess more broadly, you can probably start trying to discuss what you think the difference was between these two teams. Without not thinking about stats at the moment, just trying to think about what you've noticed. Um, between them. Well, because it's it seems to be like a lot of the things that you've been saying where it's been the aggression coming out of these two soldiers. Like, Matt has been playing very, very selflessly as that pocket player. He's in the right position to go for a force or to go for something, and he will. He'll just, like, make a move and go for it. Uh, and the coordination between him and Paws has been really nice. You can tell that they've played together uh, as soldier partners before, and it's going really, really nicely. Ivan, I don't know, Ivan has had moments of brilliance. I feel like he's doing done a few things very well. They actually managed to hold this last point. That's pretty oh, funny. Man. <laughs> Some nicer uh, pipes coming in from Ivan, as I say, one of his moments of brilliance. But I feel that... I don't know what was going wrong on mids if he was just, like... Um, if he was just dying way too soon, like, I mean, obviously that's what was happening, but if he was dying too soon because of, um, because of him just, like, arriving to mid on too low health, like, he didn't have enough buff, or if he was just in the wrong spot and, and red coat stickies were just better than his, like, I'm not 100% sure exactly what was happening with that, but it was, uh, definitely costing them rounds, like, right from the first round, they couldn't, they didn't even contest that mid. They were just yep. forced back as, as Frozone was frozen out, unfortunately, with that <laughs> mid-fight. Yeah, I, like, I think Ivan's phase play is very good, but, like, Granary mid as demo is really hard to play, like, by itself, pretending that there is no enemy demo, but the minute the other enemy demo is also shooting at you, then it's, it's like, almost impossible to play. That's why, like, if you can be the faster demo, which Redcoat is, the mid gets substantially easier not that it's an easy mid by any means and i think redcoat just continuously beating him to mid hitting him with that first sticky locking out the rest of his team with that just one or two extra stickies is making a massive difference to ivan's effectiveness on granary mid um having said that i mean i think they won a couple of mids but yeah like it sort of just speaks to the larger the larger point I feel that you can't you can't discount like Riot's play either because For he sure. was he was doing a, a large part of locking them out of this mid like that first first mid where there was those, some really nice stickies from Redcoat to just zone Ivan 
Riot was in there zoning the entire rest of the team. He was denying that uh, that top balcony area so quickly, like they couldn't get out of there without eating so much damage. And it was, yeah, Riot was doing quite a lot and he could just jump back and take that arrow from his medic and live and do it again, like mid after mid after mid. He was doing really, really well uh, on, his, on his roaming role, just like rolling through these mids. It was very impressive yeah, play. I'll say that like having played against Riot, the speed to mid makes it hard for you to ever want to roll out catwalk because you just know like you just feel that you'll roll out and he'll be there but then if your demo isn't fast enough if you roll out choke or like death corner you're just stuck in death corner so i think that that combination of having the faster demo and like a really fast roamer like makes it really hard for like especially your medic and, and demo which i think we were seeing with arnold and ivan kind of just getting trapped on those mids yeah i mean speaking of medics i feel like even though, like, looking at some of these logs, the medics both died pretty much the same amount of times, nine on Arnold and eight on Doge, I felt that, like, Doge, his survivability was much better. Like, his team was better at protecting him, and he was better at wiggling out of these situations. For example, when Paws bombed, he would hit, like, maybe one rocket on him, and then uh, Doge would just dodge the rest of it, and his team would just collapse, like, Cookie doing such a good job of, like, cleaning up anything that came close to the medic, and where Riot would get Arnold like 50% of the time he bombed in like Arnold would just die which is yeah I think pretty telling for for those situations that were so quickly turned around when they had that ad and they were going in right was just like I want you dead and Arnold was dead like there was there was just like not as much protection on the side of uh, pineapple towers onto their medics definitely part of the the phase play issues as well i think arnold was dying a lot in phase play because they weren't predicting well they wouldn't like there were multiple times they did not predict the coffee clock aggression or the coffee clock no ad pushes or like minimal ad pushes there's also times that they didn't expect riot to be bombing him or you know wherever he came from was particularly sneaky um which got him i just think like in terms of the difference it's like doge dies with his team and Arnold seems to have his team die around him and then he runs away. Like, like I'm seeing that quite a lot where players drop and I, I Arnold's just stuck to run with like one or two players away. Um, whereas I, I don't really see that a lot with the, like the medic on coffee clock. Yeah, I agree. Like it's 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 like as you said, like that is a very concise concise way of putting it. That's very very accurate and I am glad to have you casting with me cuz I could not have said it any better. Uh that being said though, we are moving on to the second map uh of this of this uh, two map showcase for you tonight. Uh, the second map is Logjam, which we saw a fair bit of last season. Heiss, the map creator, has been working uh, on this map again, uh, largely due to the sort of uh, playtime that it's been getting in the Oz Fortress seasons recently. There was a Logjam uh, Cup, and then there was sort of played last season, and now it's been sort of play tested again, and it's been updated yet again. Uh, things are now a little bit wider, a little bit nicer to, to play in. Some flanks have been changed just a little bit, so it's now a little bit tastier to play on. Um, and this is this is going to be really exciting to see because this is still the new map in the pool. As much as I love this map and, and I enjoy seeing it played, it is still the new map that there's still a lot of like teething problems for a lot of these teams. What do you think about this map, Sean? Yeah, I quite enjoy it. I quite enjoy enjoy like the slight variations on existing sort of map themes that we already have, and it's just good to see something different in the pool as much of an objective to change as I am. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely enjoy seeing this map played. And speaking of that, we are heading into our first mid here. And oh my oh god. Oh no. Ivan, Is that real? Uh, Ivan has absolutely <laughs> lost his team this mid by not knowing how to roll out on this map, I guess. Uh, <laughs> the Iceman cometh. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say about this. They're Ugh. saying, uh, he's not lagging, though. I feel that that's an excuse. Um, yeah, there's just some memes happening here. I imagine they might just re-exec. Might be a little bit of a gentleman's rule. You never know. There's just a little bit of memeing going on there, as Doge does just walk into some spam and frag itself. Uh, frag himself there as it, as it uh... <laughs> Red coat is oh, forced to no. back out here. I don't know. This is now full ad on the side of Arnold, and his soldiers I don't know have just spawned. What I'm watching. Yeah, riots on the combo from behind. He dies, but for a second I felt like I was. Uh, I don't know. Just felt like it'd be like 
DM or something. Yeah, I, I don't even know. I think they were just like overconfident from Ivan fragging himself like an idiot. And then, um, yeah, I, don't, I legitimately don't know what to say about that. That was, that was pretty dumb and pretty awkward from both teams. But... We, yeah, we got Sam sniping, trying to sh like equalize this Uber ad now. He hasn't got anything yet. Um, he is getting spammed out. He does die to some sticky, some Frozone, the stud oven. Um, yeah, it's gone from gone from cratering at mid to finally getting his first frag there. As they are actually yeah, stalemating this out onto onto last a little bit here, as the Ubers have evened out. Riot is very far forward on the far right from the defender's perspective there, managing to jump out uh, to save himself the life there. Sam is saying that their sniper angles have changed on the map. That was indeed one of the things that people were complaining about quite a lot on this map was that sniper was very easy. Like there was big, long, wide angles. Uh, and I think he has changed some of that again, as you saw Arnold get in uh, pretty much for free on that far side without being able to be seen uh, by that sniper, which was definitely the spot the way you would stand as a sniper before. Uh, and he just couldn't see him properly. I, uh, some of that was the nice spam from his team. Matt and Paws going in to see if they can get something done. Unfortunately, they get nothing and they both die. And that is uh, turning our... Uh, forcing the blue team uh, out of lobby here you'll trying to do what he can but he's getting absolutely mulched tj uh, the wow uber has been Whoa, exchanged here uber a little bit yeah, yeah. yeah a little bit of an uber trade well, ivan looks like he's going to lose his life as does michael ash and this is tj actually taking quite a lot of spam as he's trying to run with his medic there matt trying to do his best to to keep them alive there as the soldiers have now spawned up this is a uh, even uber's exchange again uh, but there are still two players down so it looks like they're going to start to start to rattle this right through this choke really really quickly Yule taking so much ground for his team uh, and Cookie is now playing the point really really quickly pause trying to do what he can <laughs> but the pack isn't there anymore and he craters yeah the pack position has moved a little bit which may have actually cost uh, Ivan his life on the mid there I'm not 100% sure what's happening Yule is taking this ground so aggressively some really nice rockets oh my taking God. everyone Tay out but that being takes said out the medic. Tay Oh Two God. players on the flat, flat on the combo as he flanks in from the side, and one of them is the drop on Doge. All that good work from Yule, undone completely, and uh, Cookie goes down right on 17 health, running away onto that flank, getting that pack, and just choosing to run even further as this full Uber ad is now working its way right back into mid, and it looks like they're in no position to hold this, uh, Sean. Yeah, I actually, yeah, Matt basically saved that single handedly um yeah some really good follow-up work from his scouts and, and, and ivan but yeah now we have an uber ad push um with pineapple towers looking to move in through the flank here see what happens no sniper this time the uber is used but it looks like i'm gonna get a lot tj getting nicely juggled by yule he will lose his life for that um but yeah only the one pick from that uber and redcoat's actually in here gets taken down does manage to trade with the pocket there, though. Riot does lose his life. Sam looks like he's going to lose his life. Actually, nice pipe from Ivan to do that. Um, <laughs> Matt's a little confused about what was happening there as they do retake their second very, uh, very quickly. Uh, sorry, the enemy team's second even very, very quickly. And this uh, is now full ad from Doge as they are trying to push this off Uber into last, seeing what they can do. They get the force. Ivan looks like he's going to lose his life to this force, though, as well. Pause going in behind, doing some good work there. Does manage to get the other, f other player of Yule as well, too frags from pause behind there uh, after the uber was forced and Ivan uh, sorry not Ivan Arnold doing very very well uh, to just sort of back all the way out there uh, and build this uber in their choke just a little bit of spam being exchanged now onto this second point Doge not taking any in the of it prime there. position right now like everyone knows but I still have a feeling you have the the riot sensors tingling. oh I got it I got it yeah, I like. Yeah, and it looks like they are going to try and move through this flank, so he probably will get spotted. Yep. He actually does get jumped by Matt, so pro really good. That's calls. a fair bit of damage yeah. from him, though. Unfortunately, he does crater. Yule is actually taken down quite low there as well. Takes the arrow and walks back forward with his team, but that's quite a lot of damage from both of these soldiers, so they're not getting this for free at all. But Doji's actually going to get his Uber now, so that, like, Sam ran behind and pushed through flank as soon as um, Pineapple Towers wanted to push. It was enough to draw the flank back and really sort of, like, slow that push down. So now we're just sort of at a reset, even Uber push into last um yeah because that, that could have been potentially catastrophic if if 
Pineapple Tower's got to use that Uber ad onto Coffee Clock, but I think Sam able to save that one. He is sniping now from Lobby, trying to work the angles out. Yeah, Tay is up on the counter sniper. Matt's counter sniping on the other team, but he's really far forward. Yule has caught him out. Uh, does actually take quite a lot of damage for that, but he has uh, forced him back a little bit there as they are trying to reset and find, the, find another angle. All the angles have changed a little bit, so I feel that this is just a little bit more awkward. They're actually trying to peek really aggressively through that shutter, but yeah, the red team is having none of that. And uh, this is a uh, trade, actually, pocket for pocket, <laughs> unfortunately, on both teams there. Sam is jumping really far forward. He knows that he can hit these shots, and he does dome pause in the end there. Ivan is going to have to cross this angle. He does eat oh. the headshot. Yeah, he does get cleaned up there, and this is looking disastrous for the blue team as they are forced right back into their own choke, giving up this point due to those uh, really nice shots hit from Sam, Sean. Yeah, but also, like, I'm really confused how Pineapple Towers got so spread out from each other. Like, why was there a scout already back in choke and Ivan still in lobby? Like, I'm, I don't know. Something confusing going in there in the comms, maybe. Yeah, I guess there's just a little bit of confusion going on. R Ivan is usually very forward anyway, as, <laughs> as, a, as a gamer. And this is Doge, actually, not Doge, rather, Sam coming in and still hitting some of these shots as Sniper as he's making himself some room at Choke. Someone's trying to peek him. He does not actually manage to hit that shot, but he's taking a lot of damage there. Matt jumping forward, trying to lock him out, but there's Stickies all over the ground, and he just rotates to the flank really quickly. But so is the entire enemy team, and he's taking quite a lot of damage. Manages to survive, though. That's very impressive. As these players are jumping forward, there's quite a lot of damage. Sam actually does manage to get paws in there, uh, and there's just so much damage being exchanged in this one little room. They are forced to back all the way out. Sam oh, hits an excellent shot on Michael Ash as he was, I believe, just standing still on top of that. But the trade is actually being charioted in off that off that two-player ad. The trade is now coming in into Cookie and it's just Ivan on the other team there. And they do flash a little bit, actually. The two soldiers are jumping in. Really, really good timing as this uh, Uber is absolutely nullified and they're still two down. Arnold is oh, super low and he's forced, forced to back right out. Yeah. yeah, Paul's doing what he can at the very end there but he's uh, doing a little bit too little too Whoa. late. Yule actually does get taken out by an arrow from Arnold and they're actually looking like they might want to hold this but the height ad is all there. TJ is actually in on the side. Does actually die for, for his... Uh, <laughs> his assumptions that he could get a frag onto the combo with Cookie looking at him. Some nice pipes actually coming in from both demo men. Rob, Redcoat hitting two really nice quickly uh, and Riot getting cleaned up by a nice pipe from uh, Ivan there. But they are being forced to back right out as this aggression is coming in. Really, really aggro. Oh, nice rocket from Matt there cleaning up Cookie as he gets a little bit too aggressive in this upper area, which I believe is new on this, uh, on this version of the map, which is uh, good that Matt knows to look up there and frag him right away. Yeah, someone's been playing Logjam Pugs, I can see. <laughs> I'm also really interested in this little scout box we've got on last that, um, well, it's a heavy box at the moment, but pretty weird. Don't know what's going on with that. I think it's to uh, help protect medics and stuff from some sniper angles through like that main area and things like that. It's just a little bit more protection, I feel. But these Ubers are still even here. Riot's actually jumping forward to see if he can get anything on the flank. Some really nice rockets on pause there. Nearly takes him out. Uh, and the sniper is up on uh, Cookie this time, actually, as he's trying to make a move through the, this flank area. But it's uh, rotation time again, and he does seem like he's going to peek this shutter, but there's stickies there telling him, no, try another try another door there. Michael Ash and the counter sniper on the other side, but they're looking at different areas. I feel that there's, uh, there's no real immediate danger of any sniper versus sniper action, Sean. No, and especially if you look at Riot and Sam, they just one of them's always camped at this window. Probably, like... You know what last we gotta check what the other team's doing? Is there a sentry gun? Where is they holding? This window is OP. This window is absolutely overpowered. There's just Sam standing there, just calling exactly where the enemy team is. Oh, um, and that's yep. the shot coming in from Cookie there as he does manage to dome pause. They look like they're going to go in for a, for a little bit of an exchange off that, and that's Sam jumping forward. TJ taking a lot of damage. If the crossbow didn't exist, this would definitely be a winnable Whoa. push, and it already looks like it's going to be a winnable push as they get the force and the pick on TJ, and Doge is in no position to, to get damage dealt to him right away, and they're ready to move right on that. Uh, they may opt to wait for the Sam spawn, which would be sensible, but it doesn't look like they are, as Cookie is doming people left, right, and center, and that is the pocket going down. 
they could have just easily oob moved off this two-player ad, and that is indeed what they're doing. Soldier and Yule doing quite a lot of work, and some stickies from Redcoat doing a lot of damage as well. But the oh, scouts are nice not. Rockets. Yeah, that scout's not in position, unfortunately, and that looks like it's what what's cost them this push. Sam wasn't there. Ooh. Oh, oh, Redcoat, and he hits the pipe again. <laughs> <laughs> Spicy, dude! <laughs> oh, the blinds come out in chat for that one and said, "Hey, fucking shoot, man!" <laughs> <laughs> he lost that fight so oh. hard. Oh my god! Yeah, amazing pipe to to win there, and he hit the pipe on the other scout. It was just a shame that he had a. Uh, 25 more health than that pipe, which was just really nice damage coming in from Redcoat there. Oof. But that being said, they are fighting this second. Yule is trying to jump forward and deal a little bit of damage, but he does get taken down quite low, waiting for that arrow from his medic before he goes forward again. Doge is healing Cookie so, so well as he's just... And these arrows just coming out. Any player who's low near Doge, he can smell that, and he's like, arrow coming your way before they've even called it. It's really nice, and they do actually manage to hold this and wipe the team, basically, as Yule is the only Fort player forward and it's just two players spawning pauses there and it's just the medic two spawns coming up in one second but it's too little too late and that is after about 10 minutes 12 minutes the first round of log jam on the board from a very disastrous mid on the side of ivan that finally gets converted into our first round sean yeah, I mean, rightfully so. Let's let's see if Ivan can make amends for that mid. We'll see what he opts for this time. Redcoat's already there. Yeah, Ivan going for the slow walk to mid. The stroll, the Sunday stroll. He's not got the pack again, and he's taken down so low, and he's waiting for this arrow. But he I took a rocket, so... Oh, my God. Yeah, interesting mids from Ivan is he's just not taking this pack and taking a lot of damage. Yule is doing a great distraction bomb, and that's Riot doing the same thing on the other side. They're just turning around and turning around and turning around, and they can do too little too late. But the soldiers are both now taken down, and it's just TJ running for his life from Cookie, and he does eventually lose that. That's Sam. Redcoat. Redcoat. Uh, Redcoat. Uh. What is the what is the demo man situation tonight, man? This is like know, the fourth demo man crater we've seen, dude. Frozone did manage to freeze the shit out of Doge on that mid <laughs> with some nice stickies, so you know, they they're having their wins and their losses, the demo man. Yeah, we Ryan's do see... actually snapping in choke. Yeah, there's a sniper coming up there and that's oh, oh he's dropping. Oh my god, he dropped him. No way. That's really unfortunate. They played that mid uh, so well uh, in order oh. to sort of survive that. But that's Mikulash actually Mikalash. gets Doge. Yeah, Matt and him losing their life very, very quickly afterwards. But this mid is still definitely on the side of red team here. Cookie seeing what he can do as he's clearing these stickies through choke. Sam is very, very far forward doing the same sort of shutout thing that's happening before. This player on the flank does lose his life pause in that... Uh, I'm not quite sure what this flank is called. Let's figure out a name for it. Logs. There you go. It's called yeah, Logs. Yeah, Log Room. Log Room on the right? Is that... Yeah? Yeah. That's log I'm just going to call everything Logs on this map. It's not the only thing we're going to call Logs, Xander. Hey. Gross. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like... This, I actually think this move is probably going to end up evening out, even though we're looking at a 25 to 30% add it should have been for Pineapple Towers. I don't... Yeah, I mean, they've got a sentry gun up. I don't think they're going to do anything. Yeah, I feel that they, they don't know this map well enough to be confident pushing out of last, especially on a team with this caliber where you have the scouts in Sam and Cookie who can just like appear somewhere and back cap you, which is a shame. But yeah, they are opting to, as you say, build this gun and just uh, stalemate it out. Yeah, so I mean, I guess that means we're probably going to see something come out from one of these red gamers, they'll probably have a look at the window. Yeah, everyone's looking at the window. Um, Riot, to Riot to dealing some damage side. on the yeah. flank. Yeah, Paws and uh, TJ actually having none of that. And this red coat actually doing quite a lot of damage on the other side, causing some arrows to need to be done uh, there. And the gun is actually being spammed a little bit by Riot, but Riot is having to leave really quickly as his team comes in to protect that seventh player. And there's still uh, still nothing really nothing really having at the moment as they're kind of just exchanging this this little bit of spam there. And Riot, uh, Michael Rush is actually moving this gun. I don't know if Riot knows that it's been moved. He doesn't well, know mean, where to put it. Cookie's looking at the window. Cookie's ah, just at the yeah. window. I'm telling you, man, this window is overpowered. And they know, yeah, the gun's being spammed just as it's being moved. It does actually manage to survive as Sam actually loses his life to a nice pipe there. 
uh, as he was sort of trying to trying to peek for information a little bit harder than he needed to. Uh, might just come up on Sniper or something here. Yeah, we do see him come up on this Sniper class. Blue is actually used out. Uh, trying to get something to happen. I feel that they're in a we need Oof. to make something happen situation, but they that actually make bizarre. nothing happen. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Well, this is unfortunate. Yeah, now Sam is up on Sniper on a full ad push, uh, which is always awkward, but Sam can definitely hit these shots. He doesn't need to be on scout to frag people. And that's the first frag going their way already, and they haven't even used this Uber. Two frags going their way already, and a headshot ringing out onto the demo man loses his life already, and it's just the gun doing what it can. And TJ uh, is do actually doing a pretty good job managing to clean up Sam, but he uh, ate a headshot for his trouble. Uh, Did you see what actually happened with that push out? For, like with the blue Uber out? Like what was that? I assume they, they saw that the players were, were close and they wanted to go on a solo trade on their uh, pocket. Uh, or something. I'm not quite sure who they used on there. But they were hoping to catch Doge. But Doge was in no position to be caught. Uh, yeah, I guess it was a desperation play. I'm not really sure of, of any other reason to do it rather than desperation. I was actually talking just then. And Riot was already behind them by the time I sort of even looked at this midpoint and there were just two demos arriving and Riot was already behind. So Riot has already mastered this rollout and he's again coming in and fragging. I, he fragged the medic just there and he's still alive in this log room getting the full uh, medium pack rather. And it's just now uh, one scout in Michael Ash behind but he's fighting the entire team. Manages to get the demo man before being fragged by Sam. That's uh, that's rough here. I looks like he's uh, in a little bit of danger, but he does manage to back off in lobby. Some really nice play coming out of Michael Ash, making the best of a bad situation there. Managing to frag the demo man, but this is full add into last yet again, and it looks like it could be very easily converted to a third round on the board, Sean. Yeah, no off-classes. I guess they know that if they off-class, they're not going to cap around. Um, trying to just see if anything can happen, if they can catch someone. Um, yeah, no, I... So yeah, we just got some buffs happening. Cookie probably going to leave this Uber in to last. Probably pick up another three or four frags or something. Yeah, Paws going for the Force. They do use now. Um, they've got taken down Paws, nothing else. Point being played really early. Ivan with some stickies takes down Cookie. Um, Yule actually getting taken down, but TJ dies. Actually, the Uber gets Oh, I Ivan gets Arnold. saved. Actually got, yeah. I didn't realize that Arnold was so close to Uber during that. Oh, Doge is actually in a very dangerous position. He's taken down quite low. He does actually manage to lose his life. Oh, I have um, actually craters. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame. And the scout in Sam is on the point. But, oh, everyone collapses on him so quickly. There, That round has been saved. I think they're going to see if they can try to cheese this point. This is Yule coming in to see what he can do. Both scouts standing exactly on that point. Yule and Cookie going for it. Rockets being hit. TJ going down. And the point is being played. Ah, oh, the excellent Yule Cookie distracting there. And Cookie just chatting that point as yeah. you say, and that is the third round on the board in what is shaping up to be a very dominant uh, map, Sean, from the side of uh, Coffee Clock. Yeah, it didn't look like it with that first 11-minute round. There's a lot of toing and froing. I think we need an Ivan Crater on mid. Um... <laughs> Because Red Coat is actually getting like a good four or five seconds. And that sticky, he well. eats that yeah. full sticky too. I think Ivan needs to watch Red Coat's uh, rollout tutorial or something on this map here, as Red Coat is getting here so much quicker. And this whole team is taking a lot of ground. This deep bomb coming in from both soldiers as they do zone out scouts on the side. Oh, oh nice rockets actually from Matt taking out uh, Cookie there. Sam is forwarding him behind though, yeah, and he does clean him up, uh, unfortunately. And this is uh, Arnold actually being taken quite low as Red Coat is opting to move through through this oh, flank. No. Oh, Riot. but it's the soldier. Riot hits hits that rocket too. That was very, very nice play from Riot. He's got the he's got the medic sensors. He can smell the bratwurst on the medic. Yeah, yeah. It's just um it looked it looked really good early for um the for Pineapple Towers, and then I think just literally Riot being behind was enough for them to kinda get caught halfway, um, and there he ends up fragging Arnold on 97% Uber. Yeah, so. very unfortunate there, but they are moving really aggressively through this choke. Now, the bomb is coming in from Tay. Really nice bomb, actually, is shutting them out pretty quickly, and pauses in the position to re-spam that so that they're not getting through, but the stickies from Redcoat are now finally saying that this choke is ours and we want to make a move uh, through it very, very soon. It'll be uh, interesting to see if they're coming with in. the dot push. Yeah, they have used. 
Um, um, yeah, Arnold looks like he's getting jungle. caught. Yeah, Arnold does get caught there, unfortunately. TJ is behind, uh, doing a little bit of chaos there, but excellent two-shot coming in from Cookie. Cookie's having a very good game. But yeah, look Cookie's at, look at Tay, look at Tay. Oh, he oh, actually, everyone looked at Tay. But look at Pause, look at Pause. <laughs> everyone's looking at Pause. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh. If they were both behind, could they not have synchronized that, or did I, I miss imagine something? they should have synchronized that? That would have been a lot better. And there's a bit of unhappy gamer in chat right there, as this Uber is used into last. Sam is playing the point. Michael Ash oh. juggled really, really hard, and it's now just down to TJ and the two soldiers spawning, and that is yeah, not going to happen, unfortunately. Yeah, just it seems like it's snowballing at this point. Um, but, you know, there's always a shot. We'll see what happens on this mid. I think some of the, the soldier aggression on the side of Pineapple Towers is really positive last mid, so I'm looking to see some of the same. Uh, Redcoat first to mid again by a few seconds, closely followed by Riot, then Ivan. Um, yeah. <laughs> Riot Ivan choosing to enemy, walk. So, yeah. uh, he, he did that before, and he won the trade with pause there, but it looks like two players are coming, actually. Cookie... Uh, sorry, not Cookie. Sam is with him there, and they do help him to win that trade in, on last. And it's now actually Michael Ash getting a frag onto the pocket there and running behind. Uh, but as that happens, uh, Arnold oh, the does get battle, fragged. The melee battle of the century, and Riot wins that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Ash is still actually behind. The team is opting just to cap this point to see what they can do. Michael Ash might choose to jump back and see if he can spawn camp a little bit. Uh, not quite sure what he's, what Michael Ash is trying to do here, as the Pudis does spawn expecting that, uh, scout to try something cheeky behind. His, the Mission uh, Impossible music theme starts playing on Michael Ash's POV. He's just, uh, he's he actually met up, met up with, with, with his soldier, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's, he's, yeah, he's shown his face there, oh, Matt jumping forward, nice. Matt, yeah. And so they, much oh damage, Oh my dude. goodness, excellent. And he eats the arrow and survives for that pause jumping in as well. But this is the brass piece of Pudis on Yule. That's a, that's a, an immovable object there. And they use the Uber on him. TJ, TJ is actually behind. behind. Yeah. I'm not sure if they've he hasn't seen, been seen him. And Matt's there Michael as well. Ash is behind too. Oh, and this Doge. is Doge. Oh, Doge oh. is not living. Do oh, no, he doesn't live, unfortunately. Oh, but Sam is sniping and Arnold loses his life instantly. So nothing's going to happen of that, barring some uh, logs numbers, I guess. You see these demos just sticky jumping at each other. Um, Redcoat wins that one. But oh, it just ended into chaos for, for a while there. The minute that heavy came up, you just knew it. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Pause looks like he's going to lose his life too. And this looks like it's very quickly going to turn into about seven minutes of, of meme gameplay unless we see some points getting capped. Yule coming up on the spy class here, seeing if anything can be done with this spy class. They're not trying to close this out quickly, unfortunately. It would be excellent if they just closed it out rather than uh, giving us some fresh garbage to cast. But there you go. This, this tells you exactly who cares about logs. Um, Yule is behind, gets the backstab onto uh, and oh, the backstab and onto Bro Zone. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, Redcoat no. does lose his life there as Pause jumps forward to try to do something, but it's just TJ and Matt left on last. TJ gets absolutely crushed. Matt's jumping forward to see if he can save this point at all. Loses his life, and that's no spawns in time, unfortunately. And that is five on the board uh, in what is a very <laughs> dominant showing, Sean. Yeah, that one was definitely less less to and fro than the previous map. Um, still reasonably fun for the first half, I think. Like a close game. I think, yeah, there's elements that show that Pineapple Towers should or could make these games a little bit closer. Um, again, I think they're just going to work out their coordinated aggression and we'd probably, like, because I don't think there's that much separating these teams in terms of DM. Um it's just the coordination and the team play and the phase play. Have you had a sneak peek at these logs, Xander? Um, I do have some logs up in front of me, but I feel especially more so than usual in a 5-0, logs don't really mean too much. Because, yeah. I mean, if you look at the first three 
players on the board. Sam spent way too much time sniping there, getting quite a lot of frags, going 22 for 15 with the most damage in the server, unless my logs aren't quite up to date, but I believe they should be. And that is Sam top damaging Riot coming in very, very quickly behind him, about 10 DPM behind him doing quite a lot. And then there's Cookie with the most frags in the server, 27 for seven, in which is just like he's showing off he's to the other so, team at this point. He's, yeah, uh, mega gamer. I would say that, like, when your flank is top damaging, it probably says a lot about the the type of game that we watched. Um, and yeah, just if yeah, if your flank is top damaging, I think it usually means you're moving a lot. Like, there's a lot of pushing and aggression. Not there's no chance. And I, I think we didn't we didn't really see this. It wasn't a lot of the game settling down into like a into stalemates, unless it was on last, which I guess wasn't that often because they were pretty quickly ended. Yeah, we did see like a couple, but I feel that, yeah, it was a high damage game, high kill game because there were very few stalemates, mm. as you said. But I mean, I feel that the story is also told, as you say, just in the coordination on on the flank in particular. I know Michael Ash is just a sub for this team. Silvo is normally their core scout. And I mean, Michael Ash is, is a good player and he, I feel that he has better game sense than Silvo, but Silvo has been grinding MG a lot and he has a very, very good DM. And it's, uh, I think, a little bit telling that Maiko didn't have the best game, uh, only 174 DPM on him. He was getting cleaned up very, very quickly, uh, which is a little unfortunate to see. And I think that was definitely a uh, a uh, con- uh, a factor in their loss. That's the word. Yeah. I mean, we are, I am seeing in chat from um, Tay himself that Silverdox got cut. So, I think M- Mikhail Ash might be the core scout now. But I think that um, Mikhail Ash gets caught out a lot more away from pause than, say, like Sam does from Riot. Um, and it's often like Sam is actually more aggressive and away from Riot, but it's just that Mikalash is like always backing away, away from Pause, and Pause is going in to try and salvage a fight, and they just get picked off alone. Um, yeah, I reckon. I reckon that's a f- pretty accurate description of of what was happening. I wasn't aware that they had cut. Uh, I've Silvo. just seen it now in the Twitch chat, so that's a very public way to announce that, Matthew. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, looking at medic stats as well, I feel that there's not really too much to say there. Both demos getting very, very similar heals. Um, it's just really the difference in uh, Arnold's survivability. He died quite a lot, only getting six uber to Doja's nine. I feel there's not really too much else to say <laughs> for these logs. It <laughs> not, was not it was a five zero. Yeah, I do. I do think though that these teams can stand up to each other a lot more than we did see because like. Sure. There is some good talent on these teams like Matt and Pause and TJ. Like, there's definitely players that know what they're doing on these teams. They just need to uh, coordinate it a bit better. I mean, this is definitely one of the best teams in Australia on, on the coffee clock side. But I feel that this play- team being third place shouldn't be this far behind. Like, I feel that they can definitely hold more. Despite what the scoreline was today, I think they can and definitely I think hold more. They would they would think that as well. I think... Like, especially the players of theirs that have sort of been at the top before, they would feel like they can sort of, you know, contest with the best. So, I'm, I'm talking about TJ, Pause, Tay, Arnold. I'm sure they are internally thinking that they should be doing significantly better than they are. Um, but I think, yeah, when you bring in players that haven't been around the top of Prem for very long, i.e. Um, Ivan and Mika Lash, there is a bit of ground to be made up, especially just in like natural coordination because when you get there there's sort of like a team unified response when things happen and that's what makes a team like coffee clock so dangerous is it's not necessarily a call as much as they all just have the same reaction to the same like situation yeah i agree and that's like definitely uh that's definitely the big difference between these top two teams and the teams that are sitting below it i feel that the gap uh, the gap, while it should be a lot closer than it is, isn't because of that reason. I feel that the top two teams have that coordination and have that, like, team reaction to something. Like, they all know what to do when they do it. Like, this team and the Rocky team or the Hertz team, which, whichever one it is. Um, I feel that it's a... Uh, 
uh, missing from these from these sort of third four place teams unanimous confusion and um and this team pineapple towers i feel that they just don't know how to react in certain situations and whether that's just time spent together or whether that's just experience at this top level in general uh but it really does show in what could have been a very very close game uh going 5-0 3-1 or whatever the score was on, on the last map <laughs> But yeah, yeah I so mean, do you have that. do you have um do you have anything else to add to this before we start to to wrap up proceedings from the evening? Um, no, I mean, I feel like we've we've covered what we think were the main differences and sort of like if if these two teams were to play each other again in a month, I would expect it to be closer. I think is how I'll sort of just finish my thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I guess uh, that being said, we move on to uh, some shout outs and stuff like that as we as we wrap up. Do you have any shout outs, Sean? Yeah, I'll shout out the the Zeno Discord, which is slowly, slowly dying. Um, and shout out to Weedhoofed and you, Xander. Oh, thanks, Sean. Um, shout out to Weedhoofed for joining us again on the other side of the world to bring his amazing casting expertise to these games. It's amazing to have talent like you here. Thank you so much, man. Uh, shout out to Sean for being a pleasure to cast with, as always. You're amazing, my dude. Shout out to uh, Foz and everyone doing the hard organizational work behind this uh, behind this uh, stream. It doesn't happen without these people doing as much as they can. Shout out to Xeno Discord as well. We will keep you alive for as long as possible. <laughs> and shout out to both teams for a great game tonight. Uh, some great moments to cast. Uh, some very hilarious moments to cast, Ivan. Um, <laughs> but, but indeed... Um, shout out to all of you for watching and we'll be back, uh, next week with some really nice, uh, games, hopefully a top two game next week between big chungus and, uh, uh, whatever this coffee clock. I'm so bad with team names, uh, but yeah, so we'll be back with some of that later in the meantime, uh, good night guys. And we'll catch you in the next stream. Good night.